off and the clock has started. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Hey guys, welcome back to Art Mart, our ninth episode of our first season. We're almost at double digits, and today we got a very special guest, Liz Cohen. I'm going to let her introduce herself and give your social media information. Okay. Um, I'm Liz Cohen. I'm a ceramic artist um, from Atlanta, Georgia, but I moved here about seven years ago. I work out of my home studio um, in Denver, making functional pots with a like a retro flare kind of retro inspired pots and yeah I, I think that's about it that's the elevator pitch <laughs> <laughs> uh, being from Georgia that sounds pretty peachy uh yeah not so much, not so much so I mean for some people maybe but <laughs> yeah not for me well it's, I actually used to I used to play a little like season of football down in Georgia oh, and cool. I live like in Decatur and in Bank, Bankhead and Buckhead okay. so I kind of know the area so yeah. What was your artistic artistic inspirations being from there? Um, I don't know if I have a, a inspirations from the city itself. Um, but I went to school downtown at Georgia State, so um, with and I got an art degree. So I guess I mean I wouldn't say yeah I don't I'm not like influenced by anything necessarily from that specific area, but um, yeah. I just I'm I'm inspired mostly by uh, like mid-century modern and retro aesthetics I guess design and architecture and stuff. Well, definitely. Um, so I I ended up finding uh, for all our listeners ended up finding Liz through Instagram and she probably had one of the most aesthetically pleasing Instagrams I have ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> so uh, make sure you follow Liz, was it Liz Cohen? Oh, sorry, I didn't click <laughs> that. Uh, Liz Cohen Ceramics. Um, so Liz C O H E N ceramics yeah i mean like just listening while you're listening to this just go on it right now so you kind of give an i get an idea of who we're talking to because her, her, her ceramics are absolutely incredible i sent these guys your social media a few days ago just to get like a little you know information out, out of you yeah or whatnot and being from colorado everyone really loves pot <laughs> that's true they and love those are the ceramics <laughs> they are pots Especially pots for pot yeah so yeah, there you go. <laughs> like those pots for that sounds like a non-profit organization to help people yeah. with pot. Yeah, maybe the pots medical marijuana. Uh, I guess you could even sell that. pots for the pots for that pot. <sighs> if you ever got into it. Also, it could just be a honey pot. Yeah. To catch people doing the bad things. <laughs> I mean, like, okay, now back yeah. to art. Anyway. <laughs> and Liz. <laughs> go on. We're not high right now. <laughs> no, this is just me on a tangent. <laughs> So I was reading a little bit about your bio. You've been doing this since 2010. What was art, was art in your life before that? Yeah. So I um I've been doing art since I was like can, since I can first remember. But um I went to school at Georgia State for art, and that was when I f- first took my uh, when I took my first ceramics class. So I was probably a sophomore, and I took a 3D design class and then you have to take um more 3d stuff so i decided to take hand building and that's when i like first touched clay i might have done it in high school at some point but it it didn't like stick with me or i don't remember it really um but when i took it in college i was like this stuff is awesome so i'm gonna i i'll do another clay class so i took wheel throwing and that's when it like solidified it for me so i touched clay i got to like put it on a wheel and i felt like i had a natural kind of ability for it and I just kind of hit the ground running and I took as many clay classes as I could when I was in school and um, graduated I got a wheel for my graduation present and oh, then nice. I, I haven't stopped since <laughs> so, so what do you like about it so much I think I like the possibilities that you can make with it um, the things you can make with it the so possibilities the possibilities <laughs> yes jesus so, christ <laughs> you're welcome so many puns for pots dad jokes pot galore um yeah i think i had always been into drawing and painting growing up just because those were the easy mediums that um, right. you can do cheaper kind of thing at least you know for a kid and um because most you don't need a kiln and stuff for that um but I like the fact that I can make a, a three-dimensional object, something that you can use every day or or not. But um, And you can also combine those other medium styles. So you can still draw on pods. You can paint on pods. You can um, have literal like depictions of, 
on, of things on pots or it can be abstract, but it, it's still, I like the 3D element of it as well. So all of that kind of combined. That is really neat. So it's almost like you can kind of get like the best of both worlds with pottery. Yeah. Yeah. You can still draw and paint, but you could also like paint on a mug or draw on a mug or a plate or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's been around since I did some research on ceramics too before this. <laughs> nice. oh boy. 28,000 BC. There was a, a first, uh, I guess the, not, I guess the first sculpture ever, or first ceramic ever found. It was mm -hmm. called like Venus of Diapello or something like that. The Venus of Villendorf? Yeah, maybe? yeah, that one. Yeah, the, she's like a little voluptuous uh, oh, that one. lady. <laughs> the little, <laughs> that little think, famous one with, with all the memes that everyone's like, yeah. you talk about you want a goddess, and then it shows. Yeah, <laughs> the, the non-stereotypical like yeah. shape of a woman, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. And I think people have been making pottery, yeah, for, for centuries. Um, but the first like functional pots I think were made because they had fires going and then the clay that was next to the fire in the fire, they realized how like hard it could get and then it could hold water. And then they just, I think kind of took it from there. I know that I, as a child went to, I think it was New Mexico where all the like stuff is carved into the cliffs mm -hmm. and they had mentioned a lot of that's kind of how they accidentally discovered it was because of their fires. I mean, that close to like the active volcano at the time and okay, just yeah. formed a lot of things that way. Yeah. The heat, um, the heat's really what, what makes, turns it from dirt into like something that can't be dissolved by water. So. Right. Cause it's essentially uh, turning it into glass, right? Yeah. The glazes, um, I don't know if you could consider the clay when it turns in, I guess it's just considered ceramic, but the glaze that goes on top of ceramics a lot is considered glass. Yep. Oh, really? Yeah. You guys are getting educated on this podcast. <laughs> I, I, I know some technical stuff. I feel like, um, maybe I know more than I think I know, but I, sometimes I feel like I don't know. There's so much that I don't know. So I'm not too sciencey with it, but yeah. You're just the smartest people in the world to say that. <laughs> I don't know. You're definitely smarter than me about it. I mean, I'd probably make something that would explode in the kiln, like, first try. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that happens. <laughs> the day that Nathan reinvented gunpowder. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, he is from Texas. So. Yeah, it, would be, it would be something you would do. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of woohoos, did you ever figure out your woohoo? Oh, yeah. So, I don't know what it is, but... Good tangent. But... Um, <laughs> Like every day, like I don't know, it's completely random. Sometimes it happens at like four, at four like four a.m. Sometimes it's happening at like four p.m., like three. I don't know, but every day it's like, it's like I hear outside my window, woohoo! Like hmm. that was way off pitch because it's supposed to be like key F, key D, and I map this out because it happens so often, <laughs> so often, God. and so specifically, like. Leave it to a programmer to map out the sound tones. Yeah. I guess so, yeah. yeah. Maybe it's someone's alarm for something. A very loud alarm yeah. that like spans like a whole mile away. Yeah. Because it definitely sounds like oh. it's a mile away. Or oh, someone's like weird. really, really playing the best social like prank on you or experiment of, of all time. <laughs> so see how far you take it, like you're like writing those notes on the wall and shit and like like go full shining. Oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> figure out what Pepe Sylvia is. <laughs> oh boy well getting back to getting back to you what one of the things i love having on here is people that are entrepreneurs too and mm -hmm. you have your own website up doing your own thing selling stuff mm -hmm. on there steadily amazing website as well steadily pleasing um you you had in your bio that you ended up doing some odd jobs and stuff while teaching classes what kind of stuff did you do while you did that and um yeah like what jobs i had yeah before i started doing it full time. I, um, well, I have a background in hospitality. So I was a server and bartender for a, lo a while. Um, moving out here, I did get a serving job and then I worked, um, at a catering company, like a wedding venue at bartending. But I also, um, I worked at a coffee shop and then finally I got a job at a hospital, Craig hospital down in Inglewood. And I worked there as like a office administrator for the food services department. So it kind of like, it was close to home for me because it was still food services, but it, it wasn't like facing people and stuff. Right, so, right. And it was more of a big kid job than um, waiting tables and stuff. 
So I did that for a couple years and then um, I got a remote job, which was like the next step for me to like take my business further. So I didn't have to, com I was commuting like an hour each way to work because I took the bus. And um, so having the remote job was really um, crucial for me to kind of get my business going because I had more time. I was home, I was in the studio. So when I wasn't working, or if it was a slow day, I could still pop in the studio and get some work done. Um, and I could like get on Instagram and stuff a bunch while I was doing it. If I, you know, cause it's remote, I don't have a boss like standing over me, right, like right, making sure I'm not right. on my phone. <laughs> so, um, so that was, that was kind of what I did leading up to now and now I'm full time. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. That's really cool. It's almost like, so did you happen to get the remote job like during the, um, during like the pandemic quarantine period? No, I actually got it. Um, when did I get that? Uh, I feel like September, 2019, right? Yeah. September, 2019. I got that. So just before the pandemic. So it was really convenient when, when all that happened, I didn't have to, nothing really changed for me, um, work wise. So yeah, I just kind of kept doing what I was doing. And since I didn't have a bunch of free time or since I had a bunch of free time, I was able to devote that to my business too. Cause I can go out and get distracted hanging out with people and stuff. So you know <laughs> there you go. I mean those are the fun things to do yeah those are those are fun uh I yeah I I went like head down really into into business stuff and I kind of squirreled away um for the last half of 2020 I would say yeah so out of curiosity how do you feel about the difference between handmade versus mass production and ceramics um, well, I mean, they both have their, their uses, right? So like people that can't afford handmade art, um, you know, can still get plates and cups and stuff to use in their home for the mat with the mass produced stuff. Um, I find that, um, having handmade stuff that you can use every day is, um, it just makes, makes things a little bit more special and you can be a little bit more present when you're, when you're doing, going about your daily routine. Cause you can you know, you think about the artists that made what you, what you purchased and, um, you know, it makes it just a little bit more special. So I don't, I don't think like mass production is, uh, uh, the worst thing ever. I just don't, you know, if you, if you can go the extra step to buy a handmade, it, I think you, your life will just be a little bit, a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. Also to support more local people too, in yeah, general. Absolutely. Yeah. Even if local is technically far away, like if you order off Etsy or something, but yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, totally more the creators Handmade, versus, small business. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think, um, you also like you get a, a generic mug or whatever from target, you're not going to take as good a care of it. So you might break it and you, you don't feel bad about breaking it and buying a new one. You're going to take care of your handmade stuff a little bit more, I would mm -hmm. think. Cause one, the price point is a little bit higher. Um, but also just because you know, it's not, you know, it, it connects you to the artist a little bit. So you, you feel like a, a need to, to take care of that thing. Well, I mean, I also feel like after you're like, you're 30, you know, that's you know, a good age where things yeah. get less interesting. You know, just, it just it, it just happens. Mm -hmm. So you might as well go out and buy some nice plates from a local artist and, and some mugs yeah. and show them off to your friends. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. <laughs> and you have something to talk about when you have people over and stuff because, you know, we need help with that sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, a conversation piece. 30 is the age when you get excited about getting socks for Christmas. Oh, oh absolutely. For sure. yeah. Yeah. Then yeah. you're all of a sudden like, ooh, warm, comfy socks. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. I don't care about all that other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather have like two handmade plates for uh, than, you know, 12 Ikea plates, you know? Yeah, right. for sure. I'd rather, because you can, you enjoy washing it a little bit more because it's, it's cool. It's yeah. fun. And it's not like, not like you're going to be able to like serve it to all like 12 of your guests at some point. So it's a lot more personal. Who has 12 friends these days? All right. So getting back into, I want to get back into your website and what you sell because I love the entrepreneur aspect of you. So you sell mugs. What what else? What other kinds of things do you sell? Um, mainly lately, at least I've been making planters and mugs. That's kind of like the bread and butter right now. Um, I have plans for other things, but since the demand is those two items, I've that's kind of just what I've been making, trying to keep up with that. Uh, I have plant like I've done some some wall pieces recently for a show, the first Friday show that I had at a coffee shop on West Colfax. So I'd like to do more of that, but it's kind of a it, it's not I don't have the market for that right now. So, you know, it's kind of 
taking a back seat. Sounds like a really good time that all of a sudden everyone is obsessed with plants because of COVID too. Oh yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden every white girl has become a plant lady. Yeah. Out of nowhere. (laughs) Oh yeah. Hence all the plant memes. Yeah. Yeah. I I tried and I had a succulent actually had to throw away today because it was You tried to be a plant lady? Yeah. I tried. You have good light here though. How did you kill a succulent? See, I don't know. I don't know. I, I grew weed plants in college. Is it because you didn't have a good... <laughs> Sometimes they're, they're harder than you think. Succulents yeah. Is cause... it because you didn't have a good clay pot? Because I think we know someone who can make a good pot planter. Liz, Maybe you should ask before. our guest. Yeah. I also know a little bit about plants, so I could help you with See, the, there you go. your plants, too. Maybe you should just start investing in cactuses, because you can be... That's prick. what a succulent is. I don't know, dude. I, um, oh, I managed sh- to kill... <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> There you go. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. I managed to kill a uh, baby cast iron plant, so I'm on the same boat with you. <laughs> cast? Is that called, how they grow on, on no, plants? No, it's, it's literally, it's called a cast of, no, oh, no. Cast iron? <laughs> Do they, iron are they alchemists cast because they cast iron? I'm not even going to respond to that one. You're welcome. <laughs> so if you wanted to venture outside of mugs, plant mm-hmm. potters, and even wall art, what would you want to make? Oh, that's a good, a good question. Um... I don't know. I guess, I mean, I have ideas for, I want to make some dog bowls because Denver people love dog bowls and it seems That is like an understatement. Yeah. Everyone loves dog bowls. Yeah. You could sell that all across the country. I could oh, use yeah. a, I could use a cat bowl. Yeah. I yeah. Can, those would be easier because they're smaller. Exactly. Yeah. Um, this is a really thirsty cat. Yeah. <laughs> thirsty. Yeah. Um, what else? I guess like I would, it'd be fun to do some sculptures or some like larger pieces it uh, doesn't matter what piece it is. Maybe some large planters. Um, I just, uh, I don't know, I guess I haven't really thought that much about it. Well, but before, we, before the show, we were talking a little bit. You said you were mixing uh, ceramics with, with, uh, with murals. murals, right? Mm-hmm. Is yeah. That, so you know, tell, tell the viewers a little bit about, about that. Um, yeah, so I, uh, so I just, I have had this idea. I've, uh, I love drawing and painting, obviously. And my, my ceramics is less involved with drawing and painting. I guess, I, like, like I said, you can draw and paint on pots, but I don't. Right. Um, so I would like to still involve part of that um, side of my, I guess, <laughs> skills. So combining murals with ceramic art would be space-specific or site-specific. So I would, um, I'd love to, f- like, have wall p- wall spaces that I could design a mural for and then incorporate ceramics with that so it kind of goes together as one um, cohesive piece instead of you know just uh, ceramics on the walls or a mural on a wall so combining those two things would be cool Um, and I've been I follow one mural artist specifically that I really like her name is Rachel Um, her Instagram is Banyan Bridges but she does some really cool like retro fun uh, murals with bright colors and her work is inspiring to me like for my pots alone, but just seeing her do murals, I just want to, I want to do that too. I want to do murals and I want to combine all the different like mediums that I could work with. I think that's awesome. It's always, it always makes like a 3D yeah. kind of thing. I, like, I love that. Yeah, like a 3D painting pretty so much. I'm yeah. curious, does gravity ever come into effect on this? Uh, with the ceramics? on So, I mean, yes, but you, you could design them to have, like, holes in the pieces so that they can hang. Um, you know, you'd use a nail in the wall or a hollow wall anchor if you don't have studs and stuff. So, yeah, you just have to, you have to design the ceramic piece so that it's not too heavy and that if it's something that doesn't just hang vertically straight up and down, you have to put enough holes in it in the right spot so that it hangs properly, if that makes sense. How do you determine that in the creation process, how it's going to hang? Is it something you know now, or is there kind of more of a mathematical aspect to it? Um, maybe not so much mathematical. I, I mean, maybe not like on paper, but you know, you kind of get a sense of physics, like how the object weighs in certain areas. So you know like if this one side of it is heavier, you're going to have to, you might want to put a hole there for hanging. Um, so you might need like three holes to make sure it's level. If it's something that is vertically up and down, you could probably just get away with one hole. But it, it's somewhat intuitive, I guess. So as you're making it, you you kind of feel the piece and you decide then. But you need to decide beforehand. You can drill into finished ceramics, but you risk breaking it. So I was actually going to ask that. Yeah, yeah, you can with diamond drill bits, but it's not worth the risk. The risk to me. Nathaniel, you're a drill bit. 
perfect for uh, clay pottery. Because she was saying, Kissa wasn't studs, but don't worry, because I can be both the drill bit. <laughs> and the stud. And, and the stud. Oh, oh. You'll be the stud. <laughs> Back to tool time. <laughs> <laughs> You ever yeah. thought about using like fishing line though, like for like really long ones? Um, yeah, if you were gonna like hang it from the ceiling, that would be one way to do it. I did a piece, some installation pieces in school, like my final like exit show. Um, I had some like these interesting, not very good bowls that I hung from the ceiling. This like they all hung at different levels, and then I had one bowl on the ground, like a nesting bowl. So multiple bowls inside of it. So it was kind of like all these bowls were falling into this nesting bowl. So I did, I have done that, but um, I don't like, if you were putting it on a wall, I don't think I'd like the fishing line there, even though you can't really see it that well. Right. I don't want the viewer to think about how it's hung. I want them to just see the art and, and enjoy it, you know. But yeah. I guess people always ask me, on, or not always, but the pieces that I've posted online that are hung on walls, I always get comments of people asking me how it's hung. So I don't know if that's just going to happen regardless. But well, Now all your viewers know the trick of the trade. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I, sh I like to share the process as how, much as I can. How often have you had a catastrophic incident when trying to hang a piece of art and it breaks mm -hmm. or falls or explodes? Well, not <laughs> explodes. No, you know, uh, a more cur like no, you have explosions. Like a Michael Bay movie, right? Yeah, but it could just be delayed. <laughs> I um, I haven't done a ton of wall pieces, so I haven't had anything break yet. So oh, good. knock on wood. I don't have any wood. <laughs> oh no, or that just come that that crate wood. The, the, the crate. This, would this, the would the course, proper yeah, would the wood. proper term in art be cool. break a pot <laughs> instead of break a leg? For I'm good sure. luck. Yeah. Well, you gotta break. You gotta break. You gotta a, break a few yeah. pots to make an omelet. I have a lot of pots that um, <laughs> I've thrown pots Turtles in the trash. Turtles all the way down. And uh, friends have like a friend of mine like has come over and like dug pots out of the trash because she's like, why did you throw this away? So um, why why did you throw those away? They weren't good. They were terrible. <laughs> if your friend liked them, then how terrible could they have been? Uh, they just weren't my standards, I guess. Um, it's one thing to you know, make something for yourself, but if you're going to put it out in the world and sell it, you know, for me, at least I, I don't want to be associated with something that I'm not proud of. So that's fair. Yeah. I have a high standard for so, myself. I mean, while, while we're talking about catastrophic failure in art, yeah. what is your best success in art so far and your biggest failure? Oh, best success in art. I guess I going back to that first Friday show, I was pretty proud of, of how I put that together. And um, even though the area of town it was in wasn't like super populated, so I didn't get a ton of traffic and, and whatever, I f was still proud of um, the murals that I did combined with the art. And it was a, a vision that I had. And it was pretty much entirely just because I wanted to do it. I didn't have, I could have put functional, just only functional pots in at that show right and right. probably sold more but i really wanted to explore that idea that i had and it was actually really fun for me so a lot of stuff took a back seat to like building up to that show um but and so that was my my biggest success so far i guess and it's probably the most recent that's why it's in my head but in the biggest failure um I don't know. Other than the ones you had to throw out in the trash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, they're, they're already gone. And I don't know. Like, the failures, I don't really see. I don't... There, nothing really stands out to me, but that's because I'm trying to not look in the past at, like, what I screwed up on. That's I, a good mentality. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, like a... I try. I that's try. almost healthy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I try to do that. I don't think it... It doesn't yeah. always work in the moment, but, you know, thinking about it now, I'm not really... Nothing's really coming to mind because I... I guess everything is a learning experience, so I don't really see it as it's kind of cliche to say. I believe in corporate it, environments; those are called opportunities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I hate that term because of that. Yeah, I think it's just a learning experience, though, um, and that in itself is really valuable. Mm -hmm. So, so the level you're at right now, right? So a lot different than it was back in 2010, right? When you started. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot different now. So. In your in your bio, in your bio, you had something about your you had a makeshift studio. 
Mm-hmm. You obviously have, obviously have a studio now. Yeah. So what's the what's the different from then and now? Oh, it's awesome um, <laughs> having a space to work in, and I feel like I'm already getting close-ish to outgrowing it. But um, yeah, the first studio I had after I graduated school was in my. I, I got the wheel and I set it up in my kitchen. And um, so I threw pots at home in the kitchen. We didn't have like a dining room table or anything right, like that. Right. It was like a kitchen and then the other half of it was dining for dining, but we didn't have a table. So I put my studio stuff in there and um, I made pots and I drove it to this studio in Georgia, um, like South East Atlanta, um, mud fire. And I drove it there to have it fired. Did that for a couple months and then I moved out to Denver. So that was the first little shitty studio. And then... I set up another really shitty studio in a guest bedroom of our of a duplex we were renting and um, hooked up a kiln illegally. <laughs> <laughs> That's wait, wait, the wait, best wait, kind of kiln. Um, I didn't ask the landlord if I could put a, a 2,000 plus degree machine in a, the place we were renting. So, so is that illegal It's probably se? a fire hazard, I would say. Uh, yeah, if I had asked them, they probably would have said no. Right. Uh, yeah. I, I'm Did pretty sure. Out. But I mean, what you don't legal, ask doesn't hurt them. Yeah, mm-hmm. I didn't ask, and I put a blank plate over the outlet when uh, we moved out. So <laughs> we made a hole Fantastic. in the wall. Hid <laughs> the evidence. Never put a blank plate over it. They never found it. I love I mean, that. they might have found it, but they didn't come back at me for it. Um, the next place after that was a townhouse that we rented, and the landlord was an electrician, and he actually saw the kiln when we were moving in. I was like, oh shit, he saw the kiln. Is he gonna like be like, you can't use that? And he was like, I'll hook that up for you. I was like, oh, so okay. So he better. like hooked up my my kiln for me, and we kept it in the like the basement, and it was it was. Legit. That is the one nice thing about out here is everyone seems very positive of like creative stuff in general. Yeah, yeah. He was a nice nice Polish man, and I think he <laughs> those are the best. <laughs> yeah, I think he was so oddly so specific. specific. <laughs> no other fact he was about just him. So Polish though, like did he give you pierogies though? Because that he didn't is give even, me pierogies, oh, but it's fine. Not he Polish up enough. <laughs> I think he was just like happy that like we were renting that space because it was not. It was kind of a sketchy part of town. He was like, oh, two like pretty chill people renting. I'm, I want to keep them here, so I'll make them happy. Um, and also, probably he wanted to oversee how the kiln was going to be hooked up. In case the place burnt down, he Fair. knew that it wouldn't be oh, because yeah. of... At least he was going to do it right. He'd do it right to get the insurance money. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah. You do it For right. Sure. You do it mm-hmm. yourself. To code. Yeah. You go what, to code. what struggles or challenges did you encounter going from making pottery and ceramic art in Georgia with like 400 feet of elevation to Denver with like 10 times um, that? Yeah. So um, it is learning. It is a learning curve because it's so dry out here. Um, pots dry a lot faster so I've been it's really tricky to keep the pots from drying out before like the next step is needed so it, I haven't like had any disasters but um, you know I've definitely had pots that dried and I just had to recycle does the, the elevation affect it as well or not as much it, um, more so I would assume with the baking process than anything I don't uh, so I haven't really like noticed yeah, more flour. I don't think I that works. Though. I haven't noticed with the the firing itself. I haven't noticed a difference. Um, it's mainly just the um, the humidity level that is a difference. Once it reaches, I don't know. I don't know how many degrees it would need to reach for it to not matter, but it doesn't really factor in. I don't think. I don't know if it, the kiln firing is faster or slower. Maybe. Maybe faster. It doesn't feel like it, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> is there any difference in availability of resources in Denver versus outside of Atlanta? Or is that kind of the same and it's going to be the same uh, in any populated area? Any large city should have a like a ceramic supply company. Um, you do come into the problem of like if there's a specific clay you really like and um, you used to like I used to get a standard. Um, it's, a, it's called standard clay supply. They're East Coast and I can't get their clay here so um i did switch clays um i'm using laguna clay now so it's more so the kinds of things you can get but like you know you can get sh- anywhere to ship it to you you just have to pay for it um but yeah any there's there's a couple um clay supply stores around town here and in, in atlanta obviously there's a couple that i knew of i'm sure there's more now so yeah. is there a difference between like 
the clay that they have us play with in high school is like the giant chunk of mud, basically, versus what mm-hmm. you use? Um, no, not really. I mean, if I don't know what your experience was, um, but most high schools that, that I know that have ceramics program is going to be, it's pretty much dirt. And it goes into a kiln and it gets heated up to, you know, almost 2,000 degrees, if not more. And, um, yeah, it's probably the same. If, the, if they're putting it in your conventional kitchen oven, that is not, not the same. And, yeah. it's, and if they're air drying the clay and then, like, painting it and never put it in, under heat, then that's not the same. Right. But, yeah. um, have you also ever thought about playing with something like polymer clay for, like, sculpting and purposes other than pottery? Uh, I have it's, but I think it's more beneficial for smaller scale stuff. So like mm-hmm. jewelry and stuff, people use it a lot for jewelry. Um, it get it would get very expensive if you're gonna make a large sculpture with polymer clay. Yeah, uh, like I personally am working on a piece right now using epoxy sculpt, and okay. it's about the size of a human torso. Wow. And that right now is running me close to two hundred dollars in materials. It's very wow. varying measurement like how big like it's, what kind of torso, torso it's literally like on an a adult human? torso an adult torso <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's like an adult yeah. male adult female adult like what female. kind of body build we like americans really player? will use anything except the metric system <laughs> sinkholes opened up that is yeah. six washing machines yeah. across right like two feet tall is that two yeah. feet? so all of our well, Belgian yeah, listeners about, we're sorry again yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's about like yay it okay so the base of it is on a mannequin Okay. If that tells you, yeah. A gotcha. fem- fem- female yes. kin. Yeah. Not a mannequin. It's no. a female kin. Epoxy is expensive. A I've not known an epoxy sculpt. I'm not oh, yeah. Like, it's that, but... $40 for a tub of that's like a pound. Well, I went, I went with you to go get it. Yeah, yeah. No, I already nuts. need more. I can, I cannot. I, went, I walked in the store with, with him. What was the store called? Uh, HR Managers. You guys are welcome for the plug. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we Sponsor walked in us. and I just like, yeah. picked up different things and like the price tag on everything I was like what? Yeah. I was oh. like now you know why I'm broke all the time a lot of art supplies aren't cheap like the legit ones like mm-hmm. um, clay itself is not very expensive so I can get a 25 pound bag for 12 to 18 bucks oh it's actually a lot cheaper bad. than I thought yeah I it's cheap be. it's the other stuff that makes it expensive like the the equipment that you need to make it a finished piece the kiln you know, that's probably the biggest expense. But, you know, if you're going to have a wheel, you need that. Um, you need a safe place to, you know, do all the things with clay. Not so in like, an apartment that you don't tell Ideally, anyone. Ideally not. <laughs> so that was a very so ideally term. in yeah. a townhouse hooked up by a Polish man. A very yes. Polish okay. man. Yeah. A very Literally extremely like, Polish man. Find you a, an, a, a Polish <laughs> electrician. <laughs> A plug for all you Polish people out there. Please listen to our podcast. A plug because he's yeah. an <laughs> I'm happy. Also, Polish. for any of our Polish listeners, I will eat your pierogies if you want to send us some. Yeah. That sounds oddly well, sexual. Know. Or baklava. Oh. Is that, oh. Is that Polish? I mean, it's good. Baklava. It's not Polish. Oh. It's not Polish, but it's definitely it's that. Middle Eastern. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's, it's, right? Right? it's like Eastern it's European, yeah. Greek, Middle Eastern. It's yeah. It's Greek. It's the same. I think, right? It's, yeah, I think Greek, Middle Eastern. Greek. It's all kind of the same in there. Like, you can get it with, like... I mean, it's still delicious, though. It's not raw. Yeah. Anything with phyllo dough... And honey. Yeah, I, think, I think if you soak anything nuts. in enough honey, it will be good. Yeah. I can't think of many technically edible things with enough honey that won't be good. I should start stoking myself in honey so I could actually be good. You're already You're covering already... cheese half the day, so. Yeah, it's so sweet. Cheese so sweet. and honey actually go well together. <laughs> they do. Well, yeah. coming, coming back to <laughs> And getting out like of that conversation. Back. back together. <laughs> like hurting cats. I'm trying to. Yeah, but, the, but his cat kept on going underneath the couch. And I was like, no, 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 no. My yeah. cat is now in the cat pack. Yes, it's, a, it's literally an astronaut backpack. It yeah. looks like a little spaceship. It's like for something a cat. from Star Wars. It's yes. great. I love it. Mine's just something from, um, what was that animated movie? Something Robinsons? Meet the Robinsons? No. Yeah, that one. Meet the Robinsons. Was that Meet the Robinsons? Yeah, it looks like it's out of that. Well, okay, wrapping back, wrapping back. <laughs> yeah. It also looks kind of oh, like so. one of the little Guess guys. Not. It also looks like one of the little guys from Among Us. It's kind of sus, bro. Yeah, it is sus. So anyway, yeah, right, back to it. So I want to <laughs> I want to get into listeners that might be interested in making this kind of art. So what would they yeah. what would they need and what kind of information should they find? And even if you have some yeah. instructional videos. Um. Yeah, I have some stuff on online. So that stuff is free. There's tons of resources online: YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. I'm sure. I don't have a YouTube or whatever, but um. 
that stuff is free. If you want to find a place close to you that, um, if you don't have the space for a kiln or the money for a kiln or a wheel or any of that stuff, a lot of cities will have a uh, community center that you can take classes at, rec centers, um, at least around here. I didn't look into rec centers when I lived in Atlanta, but there's quite a few rec centers around here in Denver that have clay programs. Um, I used to teach at Foothills Arts, Art and Rec, Foothills Parks and Rec in their art um, department. They had a ceramics program that's actually really good for a rec center. Um, so you can take classes. Um, you know, it's like four to six week commitment and, you know, relatively cheap considering everything else. So, yeah, do some Googling. <laughs> Google that shit. Find, find yourself a clay program. Maybe Google can sponsor us someday. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be one of these days. Uh, yeah. I'll, be, I'll be buying a yacht and you be about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey. Gotta set your goals. You're not wrong. <laughs> well, we want to thank you, Liz, for coming on our show. Do you have anything you want to... We always give everyone a plug. You want to plug yeah. something? Yeah, because I forgot the first time. Um, so <laughs> 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 My Instagram is Liz Cohen Ceramics. Just Liz Cohen Ceramics. L-I-Z-C-O-H-E-N Ceramics. Uh, and then in, uh, my website is also the same. LizCohenCeramics.com facebook i'm not really in with facebook very much i just have it linked with my instagram facebook, but it is right. also liz cohen ceramics so yeah well also make sure you guys go follow her uh and make sure you guys tell your friends about this podcast because we are on patreon right now under trips to cents so make sure you go buy some merch and sponsor this so we can actually get a studio not to do this in my apartment anymore <laughs> goals for sure <laughs> but um thank you guys for watching and uh please share like and comment peace peace